Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Karina Beneduk and today we're gonna be doing an epoxy tabletop. I was bouncing ideas back and forth with my friend who's also doing some crafts of his own and he mentioned an epoxy project. So I started looking on Pinterest and I saw this. I just can't even. So I was like, I have to do something. I found this table at Goodwill for $1.99. I really liked the shape of it and the size was pretty good. I thought it would fit better in my face than the table I currently have, which I'm gonna put right here. And yeah, this is how the idea of this project came along. I learned so much. Like epoxy is is a is a lot. Um, I watched a few YouTube videos and I read the instructions on the epoxy packaging and I was like, yeah, I got this. It's fine. Um, no, it's a, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. Let's see how I did and hang on till the end where I'm going to tell you everything that I learned and things you should know when you're working with epoxy. I'm here at Lowe's and I'm really hot. Just press this button to get people to come help me. Uh, why is it so hot today? Oh my god. Run. In here? Do I have to cancel it or? It said it like four times. But anyways, I'm waiting for them to cut this wood <laughs> for my next project. On my way back from Lowe's, I got stuck in traffic for quite a bit, so I had a little dance party in my car. Okay, now I gotta carry all of this upstairs. I flirted a little bit with a few ideas on how the table would end up looking like, but I always knew the middle of the table had to be made out of wood because the base of the old table that I got from Goodwill was like that. So I didn't want you to be able to see the base through the tabletop. So I wasn't super technical about it. I just put the pieces on, of wood on the table and I just cut them at random lengths. Just wanted to be a very funky zigzaggy pattern. So, not an exact science. I did sand the ends a little bit because I thought you would be able to see it through the tabletop, but at the end, say it didn't make that much of a difference. I also numbered the pieces, so I had 12 of them total, and I put the number in pencil on the back just to know after I stain them where they go so I don't have to waste time in figuring it out all over again. The orange that you see on the third piece of wood over there is a stain that I bought for $1 at Lowe's. You know, you can go on that shelf that has all the rejects and I thought it would be cool to do like light and darker and you know I had the dark stain that I used in my balcony makeover that I'm gonna put right here thought I would mix and match but then I it was a really ugly orange it would not have gone with my blue so yeah that's why I decided against it and I just did all of them the very light color so I just finished staining outside where it's very hot and my AC is not working now so it's really hot in here too let me show you had very little days off the past week so I had to finish everything very fast so even though it was so hot I had to keep on going so I sanded the base of the table well little update it's still 88 degrees in here I called my landlord she said there's nothing they can do right now and I can't figure out where I put the wood spackling so yeah it's going great I could not find MDF that was like a whole board my car is very tiny anyway so I was like I'll just buy three or four slabs and I'll just put them together tape them cock them and everything's gonna be fine don't do this if you have the option to buy a big board and just use that just just do that you're gonna save yourself a lot of time and effort and sweat because I mean, maybe I sweated because it was super hot in my house, but I wanted my new table to be just a slightly bit bigger than my old one. The old one from Goodwill was three feet by three feet, and I just framed the top and the bottom, and then on the sides I put smaller pieces that were parallel, and then I cut 45 degree angles to put them in between to make an octagon. I was going for a hexagon, but then, I don't know, math and science. Trigonometry, yes. 
Um, so now I just went with the shape that was already there. I used my clamps to keep the wood in place while I put screws on all the sides and then I did caulk around everything. Super, super duper important. If you want your project to look neat, you have to dust and vacuum very, very well. So I decided to glue my wood together, but that was before I had the idea of screwing it from the bottom. What I learned with this is you don't want to put the clamps on the wood because it's gonna leave marks so you want to have some type of other wood that's like super tiny to put in between so it clamps the, the other wood that you're not gonna have in the project if that makes sense and you can see me marking with a pencil where the edge of the smaller wood was just so when I glue it I know exactly where to put it that and that way it will fit back in the frame that I made I did screw the wood that was gonna be in the tabletop from the bottom. Now this was tricky because you have to hold the wood, the clamps would not reach there, you have to hold it and screw it in at the same time. And also make sure your screws are not longer than the pieces of wood combined, like the one that's gonna be on your tabletop and the one from your board because you don't want it to come through. I did learn this in my plan stand project, so make sure you have the right size screws. I was not quite emotionally ready to start working the, with the epoxy, so I started working on the base of the table. I just used some sustainable wood spackling to fill it up wherever there were cracks. I let the wood spackling dry overnight and then the next day I sanded it a little bit more and I stained it the same color again which is gonna be posted in the description below. Okay, the time has come so clean it up one more time. Make sure there's no dust at all in your form. It is extremely important you make sure your form is level because epoxy self levels itself for a 1 8 inch core. Mine I thought it was level and then it ended up not being level which created more problems later. I'm not gonna lie, I was super nervous to work with this epoxy. Apparently you're supposed to put part 2 in there first, which why is it called part 2? When, Anyways, one is more liquid than the other so it kind of makes sense that you want to put the thicker one second so it won't settle on the bottom but yeah. Honestly, I did stir it for so long. Definitely overdid it but look how pretty this is. So freaking pretty and then I was ready to pour I just used my spatula that came in one of my epoxy kits let's take a minute while this rolls to talk about the epoxy that I bought I had no idea how much epoxy I was gonna need so I bought 64 ounces because it came with like two little cups and a spatula and a leveler type spatula thing and that was definitely not gonna be enough so I had to wait for another gallon to come and that was already tallying almost a hundred dollars and then I also still had to go to Lowe's to buy more so I bought another 32 ounces I want to say that's mostly for like glossing on top. Working with epoxy is very satisfying using the glue gun was even more satisfying because all the little bubbles go away and then it is so pretty so it's very rewarding hard working every day i'm stressed out 24 7 babe no no time outs so this is what i had after two coats and my ac stopped working again so that was great but i couldn't even contain myself look at this oh my god I just want to say, I'm obsessed. Day four of work, not really day four of the project. I didn't film anything because it was super repetitive. I just got the epoxy from Lowe's that I'm going to post in the description below. And I just did another clear coat. I had a few pieces of wood that were like sticking out a little bit. so. That clear coat just leveled everything out and it made it look very shiny. The time has finally come. So it says to leave it to dry or cure for three days to a week. And obviously I didn't have the time for it. Also, I did not have the patience for it. So I decided to take it out after 48 hours. I had the clear epoxy fall on the side because it was not level, which takes me to another thing. Make sure if you're working in your apartment or in your house, put something under so the epoxy would fall on that and not on your floors because it will mess your floors. I could not take the screws out because the 
the screws on the form were put in from above so the epoxy sealed them i took out the ones that i could and then i used sheer force because hashtag army strong and i broke a piece of wood from the form but then i literally had no strength so what i did was i facetimed my dad and i was like dad what do i do how do i fix this so he told me to use my jigsaw and cut around where the screws were but that worked for a few of them and then yeah it was just trial and error and a lot of pulling on things until it all came out so I just want you to know that this is super edited it took probably three or four hours to get the form out but it is so pretty turns out what worked the best was a chisel and a hammer The tabletop on the old table was sitting on a square basically so I just felt from the back kind of where the square was ending and then put four holes and then jigsaw the shape out so I would have the same square that I can screw in my tabletop to and then I realized it is too wide for my tabletop it just doesn't match it's not as modern as I would want it to so right now it's not connected at all it's just on top of it it does have a good base so it is not moving and I know it's not connected so I'm using it carefully this brings me to one of the most important things do not do this indoors okay I have no options I live in an apartment I can't really go in the parking lot and do this if you have the option to do it in a shed or in a garage or outside in your yard, do it. It will be hard to let it dry outside because you know mosquitoes or flies or whatever can get in it. So maybe do all the cutting and the sanding outside. Because my epoxy went over the edges of my form, I did have this ugly weird edge that I had to figure out how to take off. I don't know what it's called. Let me Google this. Okay, I'm back. It's called the cutting pliers. Okay, so this was it for this week's project. I did make a list of things that I learned as a first time epoxy user. It's the first time working with epoxy. The first thing that I learned, and I'm gonna look at my laptop, is do not skimp on materials. Be ready to spend a lot of money. I think the project came up to almost 200 bucks and I still don't even have the, the base that I wanna have. So I'm probably gonna end up spending even more. It is so freaking pretty and I did look it up and epoxy tables are like in the thousands of dollars. So as a first project, it did cost me way more than I wanted to, but now I have a little bit of experience so my next one is going to be even prettier and I'm super excited. The second thing that I want to say is be patient. If it tells you to wait four to six hours, wait four to six hours. Let it cure for a week if you can because, you know, that's the, those instructions are there for a reason. You want it to be completely dry. So that's second advice that I have. Third thing is do this outside. Do it in a garage. Do it in a shed. The epoxy does smell. So that takes me to advice number four. Use a mask which I have to say I haven't, but I did use gloves and use gloves. I cannot emphasize it enough. It is so sticky and it is so hard to get it off your hands. My gloves broke a few times and then I kind of gave up on gloves at some point. Then I started putting back on because it is so freaking sticky. And that takes me to the next thing that you should have acetone. I had a big bottle that was almost full for when I do my nails, but you should really buy like a big thing of acetone. I don't know how it, how much it is. I saw some people on YouTube had it and I really wish I had it too because acetone is what you wash your hands with. So it's super harsh on your hands. Wear gloves. That's the point. And then the last thing is be prepared to put a lot of time and effort and sweat and probably blood too. I have all those scratches on my legs. So I put everything in it that I had. I do love how it came out. So without further ado, so without further ado, let's see how it ended up. How it ended up. I'm not gonna hold you any longer. Let's see how it came out. Make special memories together. I'll be your company now and forever. I say we fly away, you and me. Go to our favorite place. Feeling the sun on my face in a Something with hind hindsight, what's the expression? I'm not sure. But with 2020 vision, in retrospect, something. I don't know. Pouring river top. 
whatever you call it. Yes, I did the long story short. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna save you're gonna pieces of wood, remains of wood. I don't know what they're called. One from one eighth. <laughs> okay. The epoxy levels itself um uh, for a what one eighth I can't say this. <laughs> Because my epoxy overflow, overflow, turns out what worked the best was a chisel, a chisel, chisel. <laughs> turns out what works the other stuff. <laughs> I always do this. Turns out what, what, <laughs> oh my god, I'm not gonna get through this. <laughs>